Hi, this is William from Great Affordable Watches and today I'm gonna review the Alpha Daytona with the Panda dial and some of you may know I have already reviewed the Alpha Daytona uh, but with the Paul Newman dial and the silver bezel so today I thought I'd do a uh, review of the Panda dial version and if you watched my first review I said that this watch is a very good affordable mechanical chronograph and for the price I think it's uh, uh, very very good and in general it's very hard to find a mechanical chronograph in this price point it have popped up a few more alternatives but this is still a very good option and I start off with uh, the movement and the movement in this watch is the Seagull ST90 movement and uh, in general the ST19 is a very robust movement and is well known for uh, for being a robust movement but of course uh, there have been some reports that it's uh, pretty unreliable but I think the biggest uh, problem is the quality control with these movements and as long as you uh, uh, buy from a respectable dealer I think it will be no problem and the ST19 is actually based on the old Swiss made uh, Venus 175 movements and I think it was in the 60s uh, the Chinese government bought the rights and the machines uh, to that movement and uh, started making their own movement, the ST19. So the ST19 is basically a Venus 175 movement, uh, which was a fantastic mechanical chronograph movement, uh, actually column wheel chronograph. And so the ST19 is basically the same movement, but uh, made with uh, other materials. and. From my research, the materials used is not uh, is not of the highest quality, but uh, it's still a very reliable movement. And as I said, if uh, the quality control is done right, uh, this movement will probably last you a very long time. And on my last review, one of the most asked questions uh, was uh, where I bought the Daytona Paul Newman, and I bought it from Alpha Watch. EU and I will leave a link down in the description and I bought, I bought a couple of uh, alphas from them and from my experience they are a very good uh, dealer and I had some problem with the bezel on my last uh, watch and uh, they fixed it right away and and gave me a refund they offered me a replacement but uh, I took a refund uh, so in general they have been very good to deal with and the owner is extremely nice and answers all your all my questions so if you're looking to buy a alpha alpha watch I definitely recommend uh, alpha EU you can buy them from eBay and alpha alpha watch.com or something like that uh, I had some bad experience with alpha watch.com and when I switched to alpha watch EU uh, I think they were a lot better so I had can I highly recommend them and I said I will leave a link down in the description. So I'm gonna start off with the with some specifications. The case size is 39 millimeters in diameter. The lug width is 20 millimeters, and the lug to lug length is 48 millimeters. So this is a very good sized watch in my opinion, and it sits very nicely on your wrist. The glass is acrylic crystal. And we can see some weird distortions here uh, when the sun hits it. Um, this is not noticeable when you have it on your wrist, but but overall I think the crystal is very nicely made and I haven't picked up any scratches yet, so that's uh, nice. As we can see, the dial is, of course, the panda dial. Uh, we got silver dial with black sub dials. And this is actually one of my favorite uh, dial uh, colors and combinations and I absolutely love a panda dial mechanical panda chronograph is actually pretty hard to come by so uh, this is a very nice uh, option and especially for the price uh, these days uh, some new alternatives have popped up uh, maybe I will leave a link down in the description for some good alternatives but I still think this is one of the better alternatives and especially as said for the price my watch comes with a see-through case pack but uh, you can also get this watch with a solid case pack but I think uh, the standard option on Alpha EU or 
watch Alpha EU uh, is a C2 case back. And I think I prefer it because the movement looks very good and it's always nice to see a good looking movement. The case is uh, polished on the sides and brushed on the uh, lugs here. And I think it's very nice to see that they have uh, gone with the polishing and brushing on the top of the lugs uh, because I really, it's one of my personal favorite combinations. I think it's nice to see that they have not cheapened out and gone for a full uh, polished case because I think it adds a bit of contrast and uh, I think it looks very, very good. And of course, with a chronograph, uh, it will be a bit thicker. Uh, but this is of course to be expected and I, I don't think this is uh, uh, that thick actually and I think it sits uh, quite nicely on your wrist. The, the dial uh, got uh, applied markers and an applied logo at the top. It says alpha and uh, when it was established and it says mechanical chronometer uh, which is a bit misleading as I said in my last review. Chronometer is often associated with uh, chronometers certified which is watch well, is not but I guess it's still a chronometer uh, it's a timing device so to speak so it's not a lie but I would prefer dial without a mechanical chronometer but in general I think the dial is very very nicely done and uh, uh, the dial looks a lot more expensive than uh, it actually is so that's always nice to see this version got the black vessel and it's a bezel insert and I'm honestly gonna say I prefer the silver bezel. I think it looks and feels a bit more solid than the bezel on this one, but uh, it's nothing wrong with it and it looks uh, uh, pretty good. But if you like the look on the silver dial, uh, silver bezel version, I would uh, recommend getting that one instead. And then I, another nice feature is the sign crown. It's a alpha and I think that's a nice touch and of course they are uh, screwed down and the pushers are also screwed down. Uh, one complaint from previous versions is that the crown was a bit, bit wobbly and they have fixed it somewhat. Uh, it still feels a bit wobbly but it's uh, nowhere near as wobbly as on my last watch so that's very nice to see. And the water resistance of this watch is around 5 ATM, so I wouldn't recommend go swimming with it, but uh, it should have hold up for general use. And as I said, the movement looks uh, very, very good. I think it's uh, nicely decorated with uh, blue screws. It's not heat 3D blue screws, it's uh, painted blue screws, but it still looks uh, very nice. And uh, I guess some of you may ask what kind of strap is this and it's actually a Brady sailcloth strap uh, I had one uh, to spare so I put it on this watch and I recommend uh, uh, Mr. Sailcloth I want a strap.com sailcloth strap instead of the Brady strap but I think it looks uh, very nice together with this watch and the clasp is actually a Christopher Ward uh, bother deployance clasp and I think it's a, a pretty solid clasp overall. I probably would do a review or a uh, hands-on with the clasp. I got some complaints on it, but it looks pretty good. And uh, uh, on some straps, it works very, very well. So I will do a wrist shot so you can see how it wears on the wrist. And for reference, my wrist is seven inches. And of course, I'm gonna do a wrist watch check. And today I'm wearing my new Dagas Thunderbolt. And I think this is a ex excellent watch and I will uh, of course do a review of it later. But now let's switch to the Alpha Daytona. Here it is and I think it looks very good and fits uh, good on my wrist. And I think the size is uh, uh, very uh, decent and the thickness is not that thick either uh, for being a um, chronograph. And I think overall the watch is uh, very solid for the price and it actually uh, wears and feels more high-end than it actually is, which is uh, quite surprising actually. I really, really like this watch and of course there are some bad finishing on the watch, uh, but in general for the price I think it's a, it's a very well-made watch and hopefully the movement will hold up for a long time. And some people will 
uh, complain that it's a homage or a almost a copy it's not a copy but a homage of the Rolex Daytona but I think the design of the Daytona Rolex Daytona is such is such an amazing design and and I think it's great that the design is accessible for more people and even though this is no real Rolex and it's not trying to be a real Rolex um, I think it's a good option and for under $200 you're getting a decent mechanical chronograph that looks very very good and the uh, finishing and quality is solid you can't really go wrong with this one but of course if you're looking for a dress watch you can always go for the Orient Bambino or a Seiko and you will get higher quality if you're looking for a, this type of watch I think it's hard to uh, go wrong with it and overall I think it's a great option for the price uh, and as I said it's not a perfect watch but uh, that is to be expected at this price point if you like this review please leave a like and subscribe and uh, I have a couple of more reviews coming up so stay tuned for that and I hope I see you in the next one bye